Um, you guys have a lot of potential free agents in the front court. Obviously, the back court uh, was depleted by virtue of injuries. Um, you guys can go a lot of different directions. My question is, what are the offseason priorities as you guys head into the summer? You're always trying to get better. Certainly, we have a handful of free agents that we're hopeful we can retain. Um, but you know, we, we won't have real certainty about what a roster might look like till post-draft. Um, but you know, we really enjoyed this group, and, and the more guys we can keep, the better. Next, we'll go to Michael Spencer. Hey, Tim, when you look back at um, Michael Porter Jr.'s second season in the NBA, what stood out to you the most, and then where do you see the, the need for the most improvement moving forward for him specifically? And the game started to slow down. I thought it was neat to see him um, start to address some of his deficiencies, not just within the season, but within the game. Um, I, I know he, he gets sick of all of us, whether it be myself or Mo, challenging to be, um, continue to be an elite rebounder. We think he can be one of the best rebounding swings in the whole league. Um, and he's got to continue to embrace the defensive challenge. Um, but he had some really nice moments this year, uh, has some ability to be a rim protector, has a nose for the ball, but if he's going to be one of our main guys in late game situations, he's got to continue to um, take strides on that side of the court and we're pretty confident he will. Next, we'll go to Jeff Morton. Hello, Tim. Um, What's up, Jeff? Hey, um, just in general, like in a 72 game season, do you look at this and say, there's only certain things that we can take away from this due to how weird the entire season was and all the COVID protocols. Do you look at this season and say, we can apply this to like what we, our analysis for what an 82 game season would be in normal circumstances? Or do you kind of look at it and say, we could just take a little bit from this and then, you know, maybe go to the next season with a little greater like form of data? Yeah, it's a good question. I think the challenge this year and I think our coaches did such a wonderful job was knowing how difficult the day-to-day -day was going to be um, that we have to make this as fun as possible. And um, that doesn't mean it was going to be, um, we'd be reluctant to call guys um, if they weren't doing certain things, but um, it, it was certainly a grind, the, the testing every day, the travel, the um, largely being stuck in the hotel room on the road. Um, so all those things, it, it's hard to quantify um, how they might impact playing. Uh, but you know, very unscientifically, we know this is an atypical year, and we'll try to uh, assess this year under that guise. Next, we'll go to Katie Wingy. Hey, Tim, hope you're doing well. I have a two-parter for you here. One, how much do you think Jokic winning the MVP will help you guys in terms of attracting free agents? And then two, how much of your decision making do you keep in mind Jamal's injury and when he might be available for next season? How much does that factor into what you're deciding? I, mean, I don't know how anybody would not want to play with Nicola. Um, as good as a player is, he's even a better guy. And I think as more and more people have been exposed to just how genuine he is as a person, um, I think he's got a ton of fans league wide uh, and certainly as a player, as the MVP uh, award. Um, illustrates he's as good as anybody in the world. Um, the Jamal injury, you know, we're, we're gonna, as always, uh, try to get better. Um, you know, when Jamal's ready, he'll be back. We don't have a firm time frame on that. I know he's, he's um, doing a great job with rehab thus far. And he was really influential and impactful during the playoffs, just sharing his knowledge of uh, the various matchups. Um, but I, I don't think his injury will have too much bearing on how we view the next X amount of months, because we know he's gonna be back and better than ever, you know, within the year. Next, we'll go to Sean Keeler. Hey, Tim. Uh, also sticking with the backcourt a little bit, given Jamal's timetable and where things go with that, do you, do you think you also want to address some of the defensive concerns that popped up a little bit in the postseason as far as the backcourt goes or get some a new mix in there in addition to having some three-point production? Yeah, I mean, the whole league's looking for three and D productivity. Um, you know, I thought we had some really good moments defensively. We had some not so stellar moments. So, um, look, when we lost the second round of the playoffs, so there's clearly some areas we need to improve upon. And I think us, like the other 29 teams, have put a huge emphasis on the guys who can 
um, strap up and make threes. So um, we're always looking for those type of players. Next, we'll go to Brandon Kristall. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Um, What's up, man? I know you were asked uh, about roster changes, but when you ha you've had sort of the build that you've had, and it seems like you like a lot of your pieces, does that make you reluctant to even, I don't say overanalyze, but right, it's, I guess, knee jerk, not knee jerk, but typical fan reaction, like, oh, we got to do this, we got to do that. To, I guess, how do you guard against that? Well, you have to be honest. You know, we were, we wanted to be one of 16 teams we were, then we were one of eight. So, you know, we want to be eventually one of one. So how do we continue to make strides in that direction? Um, I think we have an excellent core. Um, I think we have an excellent um, coaching staff, which has, has done such a great job being flexible and nimble um, with all the injuries in different places. Um, so I, I really like our foundation, but, you know, and, until we're having this press conference after we won a championship, we're falling short. So how do we continue to ensure we're, we're trying to move closer to that goal, not further away? Next, we'll go to Brendan Vote. Hey, Tim. Uh, I'm just curious how your and your decision-making process this offseason might be complicated by the fact that you guys built this really competitive team at the trade deadline. The team that fell short in the playoffs, it, it's not quite the team that you built. So not a lot of data with those guys together. They looked great. I mean, does that sort of complicate what comes next for you here in terms of decision-making? Um, yeah, I mean, everything's, you know, it's, it's fun, but it, it can times be complicated. I thought prior to, um, the, the run on our cards with all the injuries, I thought we were playing as good as anybody in the league. Um, but there's a couple moments where we kind of looked at our team and thought we had a, a more than a puncher's chance. We, we thought we legitimately, um, could be a championship level team. Uh, all the injuries come and then just so, so proud of how the guys and the coaching staff, um, showed so much resiliency and didn't drop their head, um, you know, able to have home court advantage and win a, a playoff round versus a really good Portland team. And we came up short versus an excellent Phoenix team. So, um, you know, it's not, the injuries aren't ideal. It, it certainly um, is, is going to make some decisions that would probably have been a little more transparent, easy to decipher harder, but it, it comes with the territory. So we'll figure it out. Next, we'll go to Mark Kisla. All right, here's the knee-jerk portion of the interview um, from, from my standpoint. Uh, number one, Malone said after, Coach Malone said after the, the last game against Phoenix that though this team didn't go to the Western Conference Finals, um, in a lot of ways he thought it was every bit as good or not maybe better season than a year ago. Um, given all the variables, what way do you think you're closer to a championship now than you were 10 months ago? What could you see, discern? And the second part is, um, given Jamal's injury, in my mind, are you relieved, though, you like your players playing internationally? The Joker has decided to give it a rest rather than give it a go in the Olympics. Thanks. Yeah, well, I, I think obviously we saw Nicola make a huge jump. We saw Michael become you know, a legitimate top three option. Um, we saw the inclusion of Aaron Gordon. I thought he really stabilized our defense and uh, give him so much credit for being such a seamless fit um, amongst a pretty tight knit um, roster. Um, so I, I think we saw uh, clear improvement. Um, certainly um, it didn't end where we, any of us wanted to end, but I agree with Mo with, with all the challenges it faced losing um, an elite player in Jamal Murray, a guy that was a superstar last year in, in the playoffs. And he and Nicola formed what to me is a, in a very uh, biased opinion, is the best two man tandem in late game basketball um, and, and still to be able to have some playoff success. Um, so I, I couldn't agree more with Mo. We're proud when guys represent the team nationally. Um, you know, I'm a huge basketball fan, so I, I love watching. Uh, international competitions, whether it's the senior level, the junior level, but we also understand the, the immense strain and that this season has, has really inflicted on a lot of the guys. So uh, like always, we're fully supportive, of whatever the players decide. Um, I think this year in particular has been especially challenging when you look at the truncated off season, the 83 days in the bubble um, and just, you know, playing every other night for five, six months. Um, so 
I, I certainly see both sides and we'll support whatever our guys want to do. Next, we'll go to Joel Rush. Hey, Tim. Uh, have you had any conversations with the ownership about, <clears throat> excuse me, um, whether or not if you feel the need that you need to go into the luxury tax to keep the team at title contention level, if they will approve that? Yeah, ownership has been great. They've gone into tax in the past. Um, I think that we have no financial restraints in terms of trying to further develop a championship level roster. So if we feel the need, um, I know that the Kronkies are so basketball obsessed. Um, you know, they, they will do whatever they can to, to make sure we have the best possible chance. Next we'll go to Alex Labado. Hey, Tim, how are you doing? Um, What's up, Alex? Wanted, what's going on? Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on the progress that you saw from guys like Zeke and Marcus throughout the season. I thought our end of bench guys were fantastic. Um, it's not easy, you know, being deep down the bench and not knowing when your time's going to come. Um, and I, I thought everybody on our roster had moments um, where they really helped us. I mean, Marcus, I think his career high going to last week of the season was three points, and then he had several double-digit games um, to, towards the conclusion of the season and in the playoffs. I think Zeke's ability to guard and make shots is really unique for a 20-year-old big. Um, you know, we, we took a long walk the other day um, through low I just talked about his next steps, but um, I think he has a chance to be a, a kind of the earlier question from Sean. I think he, even though he's 6'10", he's going to be a heck of a 3 and D guy. Um, so we're excited. They, they, our young guys brought great energy, uh, you know, natural work ethic. We didn't have to beg them to get in the gym. So I think both guys have very bright futures. Next, we'll go to Harrison Wind. Hey, Tim, good to see you. Um, on uh, on Michael Porter, you guys can obviously get the extension done with him this offseason. How big of a priority is that for you guys to get done before the start of next season? And do you still kind of view him as as that third piece next to Nicole and Jamal that can take you guys over the top? Yeah, I mean, I think offensively, um, you see, you know, he's, he's in pretty rare company, what he's accomplished his second full season. Um, and he's still so young, you know, he didn't, didn't play, played two college games, sat out the whole year, first year. Um, his second year in the NBA, um, you know, he played sparingly, then became a, a trusted guy in the, in the playoffs. So um, we're excited. We know how bad he wants it, and we want it just as bad. I mean, as you guys got to know him, he's basketball obsessed. Um, his work ethic is an A+. Plus. Um, so it's fun when you see guys like that, especially – guys like that who had to battle through adversity and, and all the injuries. Um, well, you know, we'll sit down with, with Michael's representation. Um, you know, our, our MO is when we can, we, we try to lock guys up and reward them for what they've um, done. We've had a lot of luck um, in getting things done um, early rather than later. And I think it's, it's helped with our culture. You know, I think um, you know, these guys are colleagues, they're not assets. And the more proactive we can be with, um, trying to build a sustainable roster, the better. We'll go to Mike Singer. Hey, Tim, to follow up on Zeke, but also to ask a question about PJ, do you feel like those two guys can be um, bridge players until we didn't see them obviously at the end of the season due to injuries and just because of rotation, but do you feel like those two guys can be pieces, integral pieces to help you bridge the gap until Jamal gets back um, you know, whenever it is next year. Yeah, I thought the Jamal injury was obviously um, a tough one, but it, it got way worse when Will, Monte, and PJ were collectively out. And then, you know, Will fought his way back um, into the second round. And obviously, PJ unfortunately couldn't get there where he could help us. So the, their versatility and length, um, I think, make, gives us a different look. It allows us to do a lot of things on both ends of the court. So I, I think both guys would be really. Um, important and impactful next season. Next, we'll go to Chris Dempsey. Hey, Tim. Good to see you, man. Hey, my uh, my um, iPod, whatever the – my ear pods are done, so now I'm winging it. <laughs> okay. Can you guys still hear uh, me? Yeah, I, I can hear you for sure. Right. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask that same question uh, just about Marcus Howard. And, you know, he came on like gangbusters at the end of the season. And 
Um, just how happy were you to see him uh, progress in that way and really come on? And then, then what does his future look like to you uh, going into next season? I'm sorry, I'm trying to move my thing around. I'm actually my grandmother-in-law's house right now, back in DC. So <laughs> apologies. Um, Marcus was great. You know, I thought he was fantastic. He showed the, I mean, mental toughness was off the charts to be thrown into the fire and produced like he did. Um, so we can expect him to continue to improve. I mean, he's a, he was a really young four-year player. Um, you know, it wasn't by accident. He was the all-time leading scorer of the Big East. Um, so he, he was he was great. And he provided huge offensive boost when we were really struggling um, in that Portland series. Um, so, you know, he, he's um, a guy that we, we think has several more gears to reach and, and we're hopeful and excited to see how he, he reaches those gears. All right, we got a few more here for you, Tim. We'll go to Ryan Blackburn next. There you go. Hey, Tim, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask about Nicola and and just asking about. Coach said that at the end of the season, in the MVP celebrations, that he was exhausted. That like he had just had to carry so much of the load for you guys this year. And that's one of the reasons why he's not playing for team Serbia. He just looked pretty tired at the end of the playoffs. How much of a priority is it going to be for you guys going forward? I know it's difficult without Jamal, but how much of a priority is it going to be to continue to get him some rest uh, throughout the year uh, in order to keep him at peak physical condition for the playoffs, given that he's somebody who never wants to sit. Yeah, it's a tough one because look, the old school part of me is, you know, I want him to play. and He wants to play, you know, um, and, but we also can't ignore some of the, the, the numbers. So it, it's a delicate balance. Um, you know, it's when you have a guy that really wants to play every night, you know, to me, it's counterintuitive to tell him not to play. Like it's the messaging can be mixed. I think it's um, he's inspiring. Nicole has, has really grown in his leadership. He's not a rah-rah guy per se, but I think he inspires with his day-to-day -day approach and his willingness and, to play every day. And after every game, he's lifting with Felipe. Um, so I, I think that's part of our culture. I think it's the part of the culture that most helped establish. And it's, you know, so there's that. Um, and he was absolutely exhausted. We asked him to do so much on both ends of the floor, especially with um, like late game with no Jamal. It's a, um, our guys did a great job stepping up. Uh, you know, Monte had some really big time moments in the playoffs, but those two were so good together and they were so accustomed to each other and we, we asked Nicola to do a lot of things that he, he had previously not done in his NBA career so um I don't know like always I think Nicola would decide you know if he, if he wants to play as hard to keep him off the court but we are cognizant of the wear and tear that um his role can bring and, and we have to be um as strategic as possible to ensure he's as fresh as he can be if we're lucky enough to re-enter the proceeds next season all right, Tim, we got time for one more question here, and we'll just end with Michael Spencer. Hey, Tim, kind of a big picture question. It's like an, become an annual tradition. Anytime there's a coaching opening or a front office opening, one of your guys seems to be up for it. Uh, on, a, on a light note, does that ever get annoying? Are you tired of people coming in trying to poach your guys? And then on a serious note, uh, what does that say about how the league continues to view this organization uh, from the front office to the coaching staff on down? I think it's awesome. Uh, it's again, so, so far from objective. It's beyond me that the West is an already head coach. Um, I, I don't know what more he has to do to, to be in that head seat. And the guy advanced scouting for a decade, um, spending time on numerous benches um, and, you know, the, one of the most hardworking guys, in the NBA and it, the, one of the nicest guys, in the NBA too. So I, hopefully this is the off season where we finally lose him. Um, I, and I think it's not just West. You look down our bench at Jordy and DA and, and even the guys behind the bench. I think we have a, um, I forgot what coach said, maybe Patino um, when he's coaching Providence, he's, you know, I, I don't hire assistants. I hire future head coaches. And I think Mo's done that. Um, his staff's fantastic. And um, we're going to lose a lot of these guys because they're that good. Um, so it's neat. I mean, we're, we've, you know, I've known a lot of these guys forever. Um, shoot West and I, um, I'd say high school rivals. I'm not sure if you count me as a rival, but maybe my school is a rival. Um, you know, he, he's still ready for it. And when there's an opportunity, we're kind of all hands on deck. We're, we're helping, you know, we're, we're just doing mock interviews or, or cleaning up books. I think we're um, pretty familiar in our approach. And, 
again, that, that staff is full of future rock star head coaches. So uh, the sooner the better for those guys. They'll be sorely missed, but uh, well-deserved. And I, I think long overdue when that happens. All right, Tim, that'll do it. We really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I wish you could see where I, I am right now. It's um, not my normal Zoom. I had to find a, the one clean wall in this whole house. <laughs> well, you may do. It looks well, man. Take care. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thanks, Vegas.